Oklahoma Inside Out, a weekly broadcast of Cimarron Alliance that focuses on the issues, culture, and people important to LGBT Oklahomans. And now, here is your host for Oklahoma Inside Out, Scott J. Hamilton. Hi, and welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out. I'm just curious, are you still on your diet and going to the gym and doing all the things that you promised yourself a week ago that you will be doing? Uh, I've already fallen short of some of my resolutions, and I guess that's reason enough for all of us to go back and listen to last week's episode of Oklahoma Inside Out when Dr. Richard Anglin was here giving us some really good practical advice on not just setting but maintaining our resolutions and making better changes for ourselves. Speaking of bettering things in Oklahoma, our guest today is someone who is doing that from a journalistic standpoint, uh, really an interesting fellow with a very interesting website, and I'm awfully glad that you're here, and it's a great way to start off the year this year, talking with someone who's doing such good things for our community, both LGBT and in Oklahoma City. We'll be back to talk with him after we take a look at news making the headlines this week. Washington National Cathedral, where the U.S. gathers to mourn tragedies and celebrate new presidents, will soon begin performing same-gender marriages. The church will be among the first Episcopal congregations to implement a new right of marriage for LGBT members. As the nation's most prominent church, the decision carries enormous symbolism. The very Reverend Gary Hall, the cathedral's dean, said performing same-gender marriages is an opportunity to break down barriers and build a more inclusive community that, quote, reflects the diversity of God's world. He said, I read the Bible as seriously as fundamentalists do, and my reading of the Bible leads me to want to do this because I think it's being faithful to the kind of community that Jesus would have us be. In other marriage news, Rush Limbaugh has said on his radio show that there is a movement trying to normalize pedophilia and compare that movement to society's normalization of marriage equality. There's a movement to normalize pedophilia, he said, and I guarantee you, your reaction to this is probably much the same as your reaction when you first heard about gay marriage. All of this concern for, quote, traditional marriage is from the drug addict who is now on his fourth wife. That's news making the headlines this week. It's been over a year and a half now since we began Oklahoma Inside Out, doing a show every week, a new show every week, except for our Christmas show, which you may recall was a, a repeated broadcast from our 2011 Christmas show, but that was just because of the great interest in that episode. But it's exciting to me to be able to meet so many great people who are doing very interesting things in and for Oklahoma City, and our guest today is someone who certainly fits that bill. It's my pleasure to Welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out from the Red Dirt Report, Andrew Griffin. Andrew, welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out. Great to be here, Scott. So let's jump right into it. How you are? You are a professional journalist. Yes. And how does a professional journalist from Louisiana? Right. And you've worked other other places. How did you wind up in Oklahoma? And how did you come up with the idea for the Red Dirt Report? Well, uh, back in two thousand five, a uh, bunch of events sort of took place. There was uh, the hurricanes, Katrina and Rita. Uh, those took a real toll on Louisiana. And uh, additionally, I was at a point in my career at a particular newspaper down there in Louisiana that I wasn't advancing in the paper itself, and I'd been there for some time, and I just needed a, a redo, a start, start again. So for some reason, I, I know this sounds strange, I had this real feeling that I needed to go to Oklahoma. I, I can't really explain it, but it, it just seemed to make sense. I'd never lived in Oklahoma. I, I had knew a few people in, in Oklahoma, particularly in Tulsa. So I thought, well, I'll see if there are any job openings there. And there was a newspaper in, in Lawton, Oklahoma, that had a position open for a uh, crime and courts reporter. And so I uh, took the job. And, uh, and uh, about this time, it was about seven years ago, I uh, started uh, working there at the Lawton Constitution. And after a year, I was feeling like I needed to go in an independent direction. And I always think about my 
uh, broadcasting professor in college, he always said, Andrew, of all the students I've had, you're the one most likely to start your own pirate radio station. <laughs> and I always had that independent streak uh, ever since I was very young. And kind of just, I was never really one that really embraced the mainstream of, of thinking or reporting. I, I always looked for the other angles going on in, in a particular story. And it just made a lot of sense for me to uh, kind of go out on my own and start Red Dirt Report. And I... When I was in Louisiana, I got to know a guy named Chad Rogers. He has a website called The Dead Pelican, and it covers Louisiana uh, news and politics and issues going on there. And I thought, wow, this guy can do it, and he's got a wide following. Maybe Oklahoma could use a website like that. So a bunch of circumstances kind of came together and allowed for me to start this website. And uh, it's really, in the past five years that I've had it, going on six, it's really uh, developed into something uh, I really love to do. How, how wonderful to be able to take your your career and then really jump into a direction that's different, but th- that you can really call your own. Well, it's, it's you know, I was, I'm not a natural, uh, you know, business person, but it's required me to really learn a lot about running my own business and kind of being an entrepreneur and market myself and, and get the news out there and, you know, utilize social media and, and get the, the word out it's about stories that... Often, I think in Oklahoma are, are underreported, or uh, there's just not a lot of interest in it. Maybe from the perspective of of the major newspapers or television stations or radio stations in in our state. So that's kind of what I I think how I kind of distinguish myself compared to the other other media sources. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I I know in terms of um, LGBT issues, for example, I've seen things in the Red Dirt Report that either have had no play in mainstream media or just very, very little. Um, and, and I love the way that you can get up under things. And I suppose with a website, you have more flexibility to, to broaden a piece as much as you want. But the insight that you provide, I think, is very important. And it, that's not limited to LGBT issues, certainly. Um, I love your, your book reports because uh, your book reports, golly, it's been a long time since <laughs> I did a book report. Your reviews. Um because they're not typical. They're not, it's not like, this is the plot, this is the character. You really go after subtext a lot in, in reviewing a book, don't you? I do. And, and in fact, uh, gosh, back in my early days at the uh, newspaper in Louisiana, uh, I was also the arts and entertainment editor for a while and was able to, to review a lot of uh, LGBT books and movies and stuff that people in the fairly conservative corner of that state uh, were not often exposed to. And I get emails from people saying, "Wow, th- thanks for including that in in the uh, in the section." And uh, you know, I was able to uh, go after stories where there was an issue. It was, a, I guess, it was in two thousand three. There was a uh, a uh, LGBT camp out in the middle of very rural Louisiana, central Louisiana, out in the woods, and some uh, local kids, prompted by a local church pastor, went out and attacked it and vandalized it. And I was able to uh, get that story, uh, talk to the to the owner, a guy named Skip Ward. He's since passed away. He was elderly at the time, but he was a real, uh, you know, you know, strong spoken. He was a well spoken man, and said, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm we are who we are out here." And uh, it got a lot of exposure. I know uh, Dallas paper covered it, and uh, got some regional uh, coverage. And Andrew, we're coming up on a break, but when we come back, I want to pick up right where we left off. Sure. Hi. I'm David Macy, a board member of the Cimarron Alliance, and I'm asking for your help. We work every single day to make life better for gay Oklahomans, now and for generations to come. But we can't do it without you. Please consider making a gift of just $20 a month to the Cimarron Alliance and be a part of our march toward equality. Visit www.cimarronalliance.org today and make your pledge. It's a gift you can feel good about giving. It's a brand new year and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted and we've given it to them. Now the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session, and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you're a progressive Oklahoman, 
You owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. Our guest today is Andrew Griffin, owner of the Red Dirt Report. And just before the break, you were telling us about a story that you broke uh, in Louisiana that then was picked up regionally by by major daily newspapers. Yes, it was, and uh, basically, it it really brought out a lot of uh, you know good things and bad things. It showed there was a lot of vitriol towards uh, gays and lesbians in in that area of Louisiana from uh, the editorial page, you know, letters we got to the editor about it, who were saying that, you know, well, these people are out there, they might come after my kids. I mean, this, this sort of just ridiculous reaction. And others were like, just leave them alone, more of a libertarian perspective, just, hey, they, they own the land, just leave them alone. They're not hurting anybody. They're just, you know, being themselves out there at their camp. So why should we care? And, uh, you know, it was, it just was very interesting. It really kind of opened this up. And, and this town, it's, uh, Alexandria is the name of the town, um, had a, you know, for the size of the town, had a, had a gay community and a gay bar and, and so forth. And I got to you know, interview a lot of those folks and get their perspective on what was going on with this. And uh, it put these issues out in the forefront, at least in that community, and uh, got a lot of people to talk about it and really think about, hey, they're, they're here in our community as well. You know, they're not in their little you know, area of town just overlooked. Looking at news today, and uh, I suppose it would be pretty difficult to even define what news is today. Um, but you have you have Fox, for example, who whose version of the news is far different than than mine. But don't you think that one of the the true uh, foundations of of news, at least the way it should be, is to create a public dialogue about issues? Oh, I've always felt that way. Um, I'm, you know, the first page I, I like to check out is the uh, op-ed, you know, the editorial mm-hmm. page. I love to know what people are thinking about. I'm, maybe I'm kind of a sociologist at heart. And I like to, you know, see what they're thinking about particular issues, social issues, uh, just what's going on in the country, on the street, what, whatever. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, journalism has a responsibility to kind of provide a, uh, you know, an outlet for that. And and allow these issues to be discussed and not so much, quote, make the news or, or in, you know, inject themselves into it, but just create this forum to allow it to uh, be discussed. Speaking of that, what, what kind of response do you get from your readers? I get emails. I get, you know, of course, comments. Uh, we have a comment section after each story that I write. I do aggregate a lot of stories, but I also write a lot of my own, and I have a couple of people who also contribute on a regular basis you know, that's generally it's pretty positive. Um, you know, even since the early days when I first started Red Dirt Report, I think people like to know that, you know, hey, I don't have to go to the local newspaper that everyone gets thrown on their doorstep each morning. I can go to the Red Dirt Report and see kind of a, a different story, a different perspective. And yes, it it's kind of reflects my own feelings and thoughts on things, but I try to always keep it down the middle. I, I The reaction I do get is, oh, Andrew, you're very fair. You're very, you know, independent and willing to, you know, hear both sides and then put it out there for the public to decide. And I feel that's that's important. But even, even going down the middle, and I, I would agree with that, but by Oklahoma standards, that's very liberal. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, sure. It, it, it is. Um, but I do value what you, you that line that you try to maintain of, of just running down the middle. Who, who are some of the more interesting persons um, in Oklahoma that you've interviewed? Well, let's see. I've uh, I've interviewed. Uh, you know, there's a sheriff in uh, in Garvin County. I would say that he just comes to mind because I was talking about him this morning with somebody, and his name is Larry Rhodes. And he was a police officer in Oklahoma City who decided to go back to his home county, down in Paul's Valley, and run for sheriff. And I, one issue I like, I I'm just I consider myself sort of a watchdog as well. And if there's a whiff of corruption. I'm after it, and I want to expose it and, you know, get the documents and so forth. I have an investigative journalist streak, too. And uh, Sheriff Rhodes, uh, when he was running for uh, election two years ago, told me there's, you know, there's been some unsolved murders in our county. 
uh, we need to reopen these cases and uh, reinvestigate them because there are a lot of unanswered questions. And the current sheriff at the time, he wasn't wanting to talk about it. Well, he got uh, voted out. And this guy, Sheriff Rhodes, came in. And what I, I guess what I liked about him is because I've run into some of these rural counties and rural areas of Oklahoma and, and they don't want to talk to you. I, I broke some stories out in eastern Oklahoma, uh, Eight Air County. It's has some real issues with corruption out there. But this guy said, you know, I want to do this. And finally, I just learned that he is going to be opening a particular case, the Chanda Turner case, murder case. Uh, it was originally said to be a suicide and now it's being said, uh, you know, undetermined. So that one's being reopened. Um, but what I liked about him, he was just very down to earth. He just, you know, said, you know, this is the right thing to do. I always have a lot of respect for people who say, you know, you know, you know, damn whatever they think, I'm going to do the right thing. So that that is that is obviously a very good thing for any public servant. But I'm sure that you've had uh, other people who may not have been as forthcoming. And uh, we're, we're almost time for a break. But when we come back, I really would like to look at uh, some of those people who have perhaps posed a challenge to you because they see you maybe as a liberal journalist. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Lorette Taylor, past chair of Cimarron Alliance. I joined the board because I believe in the vision and the work of this organization. We're working every day listening to the concerns of our community and helping to address those very concerns. I hope you will consider supporting Cimarron with a gift. Even $10 a month will help. Working together, we really can achieve equality for all gay Oklahomans. Please visit www.cimarronalliance.org and make your gift today. It's a brand new year and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted and we've given it to them. Now the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you are a progressive Oklahoman, you owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. I'm Scott J. Hamilton. We're visiting with Andrew Griffin from the Red Dirt Report. And during the break, Andrew said, you know, I, there's no one that's really giving me a hard time. Um, and so that's, I think that's good if you're getting that kind of response from elected officials. Well, I, yeah, I should probably clarify that. Uh, I, I've been given a hard time by uh, several people, and it's typically, uh, yeah, there, there are several politicians I could name who uh, don't talk to me particularly. Um, you know, at first I was, you know, when I started criticizing, for instance, our governor, and, uh, you know, I was on fairly just friendly terms with the uh, the representatives of the governor early on. But when I started saying, hey, what, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? I, I didn't get those calls back like I, mm. like I was early on, and, and start, they started feeling the heat. So, you know, to me, that's, that's a sign that I'm doing my job. Um, you know, there were some, uh, I guess, some officials out in eastern Oklahoma, as I would mentioned, I was exposing some corruption in, in that particular part of the state that would not talk to me. Um, and there was a, and another official who, who left uh, state government to only get hired on to a state agency, which I found kind of a shady deal. So it's kind of, uh, you know, going from one to the other and they don't, they wouldn't talk to me. So, but, but usually the people are pretty, you know, in Oklahoma, they're very polite typically and, and usually don't have a problem with that. And I've spent most of my journalistic career in kind of the middle part of the country and and it's it's very friendly typically um but there are issues that need to be exposed and need to be uh be covered and i think that was kind of part of the when i finally decided to come to oklahoma i i said you know i just in my knowledge of what's been going on in that state there there's some stories that really need to be gone after um some that there's kind of some uh, unanswered questions about and so it just seemed like the right fit and i, I just followed that kind of 
kind of intuition, I guess, to, to come here. And it's been just a fruitful place. I, you know, I've seen my website grow and uh, gotten to meet people like you. And, and uh, so it's it's been wonderful here. You said that, that there are a lot of unanswered questions. It's been my experience that in Oklahoma, we, we tend to tolerate that and just kind of push it aside. But those things never truly go away. I mean, there's always something that kind of gnaws at the back of your mind. So I appreciate that from a journalist, and I appreciate you being so cognizant of your work that you say, no, I'm not just going to let it sit there. Yeah, it's, it, you know, for instance, uh, just to, as an historical uh, example, I was reading an article about the upcoming, uh, well, in this November, uh, the upcoming uh, 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination mm. in Dallas. And the city of Dallas, I read, was was trying very hard to uh, present a certain image to the world, basically, because everyone's going to be watching the coverage of the 50th anniversary of that assassination. And uh, it, people on the kind of the fringe, you have some some ideas that maybe alternative ideas about what, what happened that day are going to be uh, basically, you know, sent away. They You know, you have to have a ticket. You have to, you know, follow the rules. And it, it says something about our our country if you know the first amendment is being sort of kicked to the curb and you know oh we don't want the world to see that side of us <laughs> and uh, it's it's just very interesting so. i think that that's a great place for us to end today because red dirt report does everything except kick the first amendment to the curb you really do support it and uphold it give us your website address sure it's uh red dirt report.com and I'm going to encourage our listeners to, to become a regular reader as I have. And Andrew, thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. I want to thank Andrew Griffin, our guest today on Oklahoma Inside Out, and also a very special birthday wish to Elvis today. Not sure how old he would have been, but he's always with us somewhere. And I hope that you'll be with us again next week as we continue on this January with more news that matters to LGBT Oklahomans and those who support us in our quest for equality. Our producer is Chris Moyer, Cimarron Alliance Board Co-Chairs are Catherine Primus and Randall Marsh. Our announcer is Lisa Pitsiri. From all of us at Oklahoma Inside Out and Cimarron Alliance, I'm Scott J. Hamilton, thanking you for joining us. Until next time, hang on to the vision of a fair and just Oklahoma. Oklahoma Inside Out is a production of Cimarron Alliance, Central Oklahoma's preeminent LGBT advocacy and education organization. If you have a topic you would like to hear discussed or a person who you would like to hear interviewed, please call 405-495-9300 or email oklahomainsideout at cimarronalliance.org. Please feel free to share the link to this broadcast with your friends. 